Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire and I'm here with Mitch Reed from No Dice No Glory. How you doing Mitch? Hey Liz, how's it going? It's going great because we are here to introduce y'all to Akar Bardvaj, the designer of Tyranny of Blood. This next game title is just so good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that's why he did so well. I think the name is just awesome. <laughs> and it's not, it's not about vampires. But there is blood sucking going on, but I'm not going to explain that. Yes. So why don't you, Akar, tell us tell us the basics of this game? Uh, so my game is about. Uh, so you might get a different perception based on the name Tyranny of Blood, but it is actually about uh, the social structure of India under British colonialism and the way it responded and changed during that time period. Uh, specifically, looking at the Indian caste system as kind of the model for the social structure. And so the, the blood that is referenced in the title uh, is more uh, the genealogical type of blood rather than literal blood. And it's, uh, it's referenced to the, uh, the tyranny of uh, birth and uh, what that means when that uh, reflects your status in life. Are there miniatures? No cage. <laughs> <laughs> there can be. <laughs> So uh, mechanically, though, what is going on in this game? So what, what can people expect um, mechanism-wise if they were to pick this up in the future? So uh, the game is uh, it's a card-driven game. So it's uh, the, the basic concept is very loosely based on Here I Stand, if anyone's played that. Uh, and uh, in the sense that you, you, play, you, you go around, you play cards for either the action points or events. Um, and uh, but the more mechanically, the uh, the basic concept of the game, it's very asymmetric. And so it's four players only at this point. Each one controls a different uh, sector of society and has a different source of uh, victory points. Uh, we have the, the Brahmins who are in charge of education, of religion. We have the Kshatriya who are in charge of warfare and politics. Uh, we have the Vaishya who are in charge of uh, uh, they're the merchants and the traders they're in charge of the economy and uh then we have the the shudra slash dalit player who is in charge of labor and so each each group has different uh sources of power and different sources of victory points so Akar, what what motivated you to hit this topic uh why this topic what about it was so interesting that drew you in it you just had to create a game about it so um you know, I, uh, I'm an Indian American extraction, so the India's history is very interesting to me. Uh, my academic background, especially in undergrad, was studying uh, uh, colonial, uh, rather uh, anti-colonial movements uh, and processes of decolonization. So uh, kind of the big, the big thing that drew me to this topic was uh, I'm used to a lot of games kind of focusing on the so-called uh, great man theory of history. Mm -hmm. um, and just focusing on a handful of people who, you know, presidents, prime ministers, generals, et cetera, who kind of run things by their own decision-making processes. And uh, I was more interested in thinking about what was it like to live under British colonialism as an Indian uh, and what were your incentives there and uh, what did that mean? And uh, from a sort of a colonial perspective, uh, I think, especially in board gaming, there's a, there's a lot of games about colonialism. Recently, there's been a lot of games about uh, anti-colonialism, but uh, I think in, in real life, the things are more nuanced than that. And I think a lot of people were totally willing to work with a colonial structure, either, either out of necessity or just because that's what was important to them. So uh, in the game specifically, the British are not necessarily the bad guys. They're a force that all the players will have to work with in order to improve their own stature in society. Uh, and I think that's a story I hadn't really seen that much before. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. So uh, I'm going to just tell everybody here I'm a little bit of a cheater. I have played this, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try to keep my effusion to a minimum. <laughs> Ooh, all right. So we're getting some early positive reports, but that's no surprise when I mean, you are in the final eight. So yeah, Akar, I mean, speaking of nepotism and everything. Um, <laughs> so we know that uh, Mitch was your mentor did he mentor you through your is this was this your very first game design or is this something that's been in development for a while so mitch didn't get a chance to ruin it or you know what's what's what kind of process are we looking at for you i actually game? played very little it with it so whatever positive thing he's going to say now he's just being nice 
<laughs> uh, no, so I started, uh, I started designing this game for this competition. I had not touched it before. I had never, uh, I, I'd always kind of wanted to design a game, but I had never really seriously worked towards one before. And uh, Mitch was, uh, despite his protests, was very uh, helpful through this whole process. He, uh, it's a great soundboard, great kind of sanity check on certain things, like making sure this game is actually fun and makes sense and is respectful to its subject matter. Uh, so he's been great for that. Excellent. Uh, is, is Journey of Blood also your very first design ever? Or had you tried before and this was like a special for this contest design? No, this is my first uh, board game design. Uh, I did, I was cleaning out uh, my room at my parents' house and I found uh, a board game I designed when I was probably eight years old. That's my first uh, design since becoming an adult. What was that called? Ernie and a Bert? Ernie and Bert find the ducky? It was about uh, spiders uh, trying to escape from a lab or something. I don't know. <laughs> I forget what it was called. That could be your second game. Maybe. We're on first blood part two now. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, first blood. So so as uh, you started putting the game together, what was like the biggest challenge? Um, because the game is really deep in history. I had to, I had to look up some of the stuff um, just so I can get some background in it, but what was, was it that, was it the mechanics? What gave you the biggest challenge? So I think the most, uh, the most challenging part of uh, designing this game was making sure that I was staying respectful to a difficult topic. Um, and I wanted to kind of portray uh, the subject matter uh, with a level of historically, uh, historical accuracy. Um, and I wanted it to be a fun game, but I also wanted it to feel miserable uh, occasionally because it's about something that made a lot of people miserable and still affects a lot of people today. So uh, there's a balance, and it's also a very complicated subject matter. So there's a balance of uh, maintaining that level of complexity uh, without uh, mm -hmm. making it too simple in a way that would be disrespectful. Uh, it's all. It was also a challenge to make uh, a, a fair game about a fundamentally unfair system. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a challenge. And I kind of, I dealt with that by uh, making it so the winner is not the person with the most power at the end of the game. It's the person who has done the most to swing uh, India into its own image uh, by the time India reaches independence. Oh, that is super interesting. So what kind of research went into this game and what was the most fun thing that you discovered in that process? Um, so I uh, so I was a history major in undergrad so this is like uh, a coming home for me. Uh, it's been a while since I was an undergrad so it's kind of <laughs> nice to do this again. Uh, I basically just picked up a ton of books and there's a lot of books about the subject and a lot of them are very uh, bad <laughs> and so I think there's a lot of um, a lot of very Orientalist texts, especially you know 1800s uh, and early 1900s, kind of using the caste system like understanding it as this completely fixed system that hasn't changed for thousands of years, and um, when it it has, I mean, there's things have shifted over time. Different uh, different aspects of society have become more important or less important, uh, and so these things always change. So uh, that was a challenge. And uh, I, I basically, I mean, the, this contest is kind of a contracted time constraint. So uh, a lot of this was, uh, I, I read about 600 pages one weekend and, uh, and then just kept researching from there. But that was good to kind of form the basis of my thesis and uh, develop some, some argumentation there. Are there any sort of historical figures or events that you developed a particular attachment to that make an appearance in the game? Um, well, so my game, I mean, it's, uh, again, it's not, uh, it's not really focused on specific personalities. Uh, I, think, I think the thing that kind of struck me the most was just understanding the system as it, uh, as it played out. And, um, and just think about the implications, you know, for my family and, uh, and for, for my upbringing in particular, like what that means, uh, what it means to, to I mean, I'm, I'm from one of the higher castes and it's, this is, uh, this is something that I have to deal with. It's something terrible that my family probably played a part in and uh, just kind of thinking about it from that perspective. Looking at this game, uh, you know, and your target market, um, I, I think personally, 
that a lot of people are going to learn. I learned a lot from playing this game and helping you out with it. Um, is that something that, as you started this project, was a goal of yours? Yes, that is honestly one of the primary goals of mine was uh, to make to make Mitch people. Reed learn. Right, I got yes. it. A lot of people have failed there. And not just learn, because I think one of the one of the special things about games is, uh, yeah, it's a good way to learn facts and figures, but it's an even better way of kind of building empathy. And I think it's, I, I don't know that there's a better art form that lets you do that. And so uh, I hope that people, when they play their game, they can understand, you know, what was it, a little bit of understanding, like, what was it like to be oppressed by a system like this? What, what were the reasons that other people uh, were this oppressive, you know? Um, and uh, a big part of my thesis was, uh, is that the, the caste system changed a lot under British rule for the worse, uh, to be more restrictive. And I think it was basically people felt uh, a loss of dignity and power when the British took over and they, that led them to kind of oppress people who uh, were, so to speak, below them on, uh, uh, in, in the class hierarchy. So, um, yep. So education is a big part of why I wanted to make this game. Yeah, it, it hits the mark. So mm -hmm. you mentioned that um, this game involved confronting some sort of difficult uh, aspects of your own past and your family's past. So is your family aware of what went into this game? Have you played it with your parents? And what kind of reception did you get? I have not played with my parents. But my parents and my, uh, my sister and her husband are very supportive. And they've been very supportive of me through this whole process. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so I was... I was talking to my parents about what what cast meant for them, and I think, especially you know, uh, they were born a few years after uh, India declared independence, and things were changing a lot. And uh, they take a lot of pride in uh, my my grandfather, for instance. He always re he he always ate with everybody, and that was kind of uh, scandalous back then. You didn't you, you were very selective with who you invited into your home and ate dinner with. So they've been very supportive in that regard, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I am worried about controversy more broadly, uh, especially among, uh, uh, you know, people of Indian descent, but uh, I hope that if they actually play their game, they'll understand that there's, there's a level of nuance and subtlety here that, that they can learn from and appreciate. Hey, you can't have good history without some risk, so. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just uh, ask a, a general question about Zenobia. So, so far through this process. And, you know, obviously you're doing very well in it. What would you say to um, other game designers if there was a Zenobia part two, which uh, I was telling Vocal, you have to have that. Um, yeah. um, what, what do you think of the process and would you recommend it to others? Uh, I would 100% recommend it to others, especially, you know, uh, if you're like me and you've been on the fence and you just needed something to light a fire under your butt uh, to get you going. Um, uh, I would say the the time limitations are very, very tight, especially, you know, if you have a day job. Um, so I would say if you are interested in Zenobia 2, start today uh, because you're going to need every minute that you can. And it's, uh, uh, yeah, especially the, the, there was about a, a two month span uh, between uh, getting feedback and having to design a prototype that were just very, very tight. And I was spending... After an eight-hour workday, I was spending four or five hours working on the game every day. So that was uh, that was a lot, and I would have appreciated a little more time. But yes, 100% do it. If, if this is something you've tangentially wanted to do, just do it. Fantastic. So having gone through the game design process, do you consider yourself someone who would who would do this again? Like, do you want to design another game? Have you started having ideas for other games now that you've done one? Yes, absolutely. I've, I've had a, a few ideas that... Uh, I'm gonna to keep to myself for now, but the uh, but definitely thinking of some concepts and uh, trying to figure out how uh, I could build those out. And uh, again, I've I have a little time trying to meet this Wednesday deadline, but I'm hoping once this competition's done, I can kind of keep going with this and see where it goes. Yeah, and that's something you know from from playing the game. Once again, I'm not a fair interviewer here. That I think those basic mechanics. Uh, as I was learning how to play it, I'm like, this really can have some applications elsewhere. And I think the mechanics are very sound. So I don't know if any of these ideas are, are using somewhat of the same mechanics, but you know, the game plays seamlessly. Um, I know when I first looked at it, I'm like, whoa, this is gonna be hard. Um, 
and a lot of it's because I just didn't know a lot uh, about the subject matter. But once we started playing it, and I have to add Jeff Comavis and uh, Phil Bolger, who also played with us, and Liz, you know them as well, um, that I found the game a lot of fun. And, um, you know, the mechanics are sound. Every time you research history, you uh, you end up thinking about implications for today. And, you know, I live, I live in the United States in uh, the 2020s, and it's kind of... Uh, it's a lot of inequality now. There's a lot of uh, social tensions and conflict. And so it's definitely a thing that kind of struck me through this whole process was what, what does this mean uh, both for the history and what does this mean for us now? And what, uh, what can we do to kind of build up equity and uh, diminish some of these, these differences we have? So, so um, this is your second interview. I don't know what order these are going to come out in. But uh, I heard that you've been talking with the other, all the eight finalists have been talking to one another. And yes. um, you've been trading idea, you know, like talking about your games. So if you couldn't play your game, which of the other seven games that you heard about from the other contestants are you most interested in? Uh, I would love to play all seven of the other games, uh, but I would Good say... Answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I would choose. There's a couple games about history that I don't know anything about. And I think those might appeal to me the most just because I would love just to learn about about these things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I love all the other ones. I think the one um, there's one called uh, Molly Houses that's kind of interesting. And it, uh, it seemed like a very emotional experience. And I, I'd love to try that out. Um, but really all of them. So have you felt like you know, I know we always, you know, we're in the United States, we have reality TV, you know, I'm not here to make friends, but it sounds like, um, it sounds like people who have participated in the Zenobia Award have actually really developed a strong bond. Um, is that something that surprised you? I mean, was it there from day one? Did ever, was everybody just enthusiastic to talk or did it develop over these, these last months? Um, so I, uh, we, we've had a, a Discord channel for the Zenobia Award broadly, um, and I wasn't too involved in, in uh, that discussion until uh, pretty recently. Uh, I know that the forum was pretty active, but uh, I think really uh, once we got to the finalist stage, uh, I reached out to the other finalists because I think it's, and I'm pleasantly surprised uh, to answer your question that we're all very kind of uh, cooperative. And I think all of us are more interested in playing uh, eight or more amazing games than we are I mean, I'd like to win, but if, uh, if I don't, I would, <laughs> having, uh, having a bunch of amazing games come out of this is another, another great award. So uh, I, I, everyone's great uh, that I've talked to and I'm, I'm really happy everyone's supportive. Uh, so you mentioned uh, that Here I Stand was one of the influences for this game. Uh, what's, what other games made you want to design a game? What is, your, what is your personal taste like as a player? And does it come out in Tyranny of Blood? Um, I think mechanically it does. My, um, I think probably my favorite games are CDGs. So in that sense, it reflects uh, on the game. And uh, here I stand sort of inspired the, the asymmetry, the, the concept that not everyone cares specifically about everything that goes on on the board. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, my, my, some of my favorite games are uh, Here I Stand, Twilight Struggle, uh, of uh, Twilight Imperium as well. Uh, it's hard to get those those big uh, hulking games on the table as much, but uh, oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah. yes, I actually picked up. Uh, you mentioned this Guilty Land. I, I picked that up, and I picked up uh, uh, the, the vote, which is about um, women's suffrage. And uh, I picked that up right before uh, the pandemic hit, so I haven't gotten a chance to play either of those. But uh, otherwise, I would love to see how someone else dealt with this this aspect of inequality and. Uh, what it means for a game. And there's also uh, another game, Votes for Women, coming out soon that handles the same topic. I'd, I'd love to play that one as well. Votes for Women, who does that game? I never, I never heard of it. <laughs> it was, uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, uh, you know, we always got to mention Kevin because he's, he's an awesome guy. Um, and uh, we all, actually Kevin and Jason Matthews, also involved with Zenobia, took, um, Acar and I out to the baseball game. I think it was a week ago tomorrow, uh, two weeks ago, right? Yes. And we had a really good time. And that's all we're going to say about that. <laughs> that's all that needs to be said. <laughs> it's all that needs to be said, right. 
So, um, Akar, I have a question. So you mentioned that you studied history in school and that this was sort of getting you back in touch with uh, the research that you were doing. Uh, do you in some ways feel that making this game also sort of developed you as a historian and you know was it I mean what was your experience of of designing a game that made a historical statement and what kind of special considerations went into that uh so I mean it felt exactly maybe not exactly but it felt a lot like writing a paper especially early on you know it's gathering uh gathering information formulating an argument uh I thought it was interesting you know not just uh not just dealing with the, the thesis and uh uh adding evidence to that but really creating a model that can that creates like a simple simulation um and i think that's something my brain has always kind of worked towards i uh i'm kind of a big picture guy so it's uh that was something that is like what what part of this information is useful what part's not and how do we strip everything down to the bone and uh so i think that sort of process has been great as as someone who's very fascinated in history uh just to kind of make that argument a completely different way and i've never I've never written a history paper for fun, but this is a, this is a good substitute. <laughs> yeah, did, is that something that kind of surprised you? I, it's just more of a general question. Uh, I'll, every gamer I know can write a better game than any game that's ever been created, uh, but they just don't. Is it, do you think people don't realize how hard it is? Um, yes, but I also think it was kind of, I, I would almost say some of it was easier in a certain way. Uh, I think like once, once I started playing out different concepts and, you know, I got a bunch of paper together, a bunch of pieces from an old Sellers of Catan set and just kind of moved them around. And I think once I started doing that, there were a lot of things that made sense. And it was really just, uh, I think when you come up with a system like that, that has its own rules, I think that's kind of, you can make that as a structure for a game. Um, that, I think it's, I think that part of it was slightly easier than I'd expected. I think everything else was a million times harder than I expected. You worked very hard on this game, so that's why I figured I'd ask that. Thanks. Yeah, I remember um, I saw, I think uh, Mark Herman tweeted out that once a, a couple of years ago that uh, he came up with the basic structure of a game. Uh, it was like out of Monday, he said, oh, this weekend I came up with a basic structure of a game. Now I just need to do the hard part over the next two years. <laughs> it's all the balancing and everything. Yeah, it's not easy stuff. That's awesome. So I'm going to ask you just a softball question now, which is uh, what have you been playing lately that's fun? Uh, I've been playing a game called Tyranny of Blood. You might have heard of it. No. <laughs> uh, I say that sort of as a joke. I uh, and That's probably been the saddest thing is uh, since getting vaccinated, I've wanted to get back to, out there and play a bunch of games, but I've had to spend so much time on my own. So <laughs> I'm hoping... Um, 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 you you did play a game about a month ago. I did. Yeah, uh, I played a very good miniatures game. Uh, no, it's it's okay. <laughs> All I can tell you is, um, don't give a car your uh, your German scouting fleet. I, I will sink your German scouting. Fleet. Yes, yes, and he um, he was their admiral. So yeah, we uh, we met up at uh, Sebastian Bay's place. We played uh, with the the goose folks and played, and and that was awesome. And you know, you, you live close, man. So we're gonna have to start playing a lot more. Yes, definitely. Um, I've, yeah, I've played, a, I've play, I have played a couple of games. Um, I think getting to see my friends in person for the first time in a while, we played some of our old favorites, which were Twilight Imperium and Here I Stand. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping to, to get a lot more out there. I have, I've, like a lot of people, I've spent the money that I was supposed to spend traveling. I spent it all on games. So I'm hoping to uh, actually get those to the table soon. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> so, um, Akar, uh, where can people find you online if they want to Ooh. ask you more questions about Tyranny Blood? Are you a man of mystery? Do you have social media? Uh, I, I don't really have much of a social media presence. I have a LinkedIn account. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> you ought to come talk to me <laughs> but should, um, should liz and i act as your press agent if you need to get in touch with him you could reach me or liz from beyond solitaire and we will try to get it to mr esoteric i'd appreciate that man <laughs> of history <laughs> no i actually it's honestly you're not you're not missing anything of import you're so not missing anything <laughs>
I envy you, actually. I totally envy you. I think every time I go on Twitter, there's just a giant fight over uh, something that seems needless. So, <laughs> yeah. Makes sense to me. All right. Yeah. So as y'all know, uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Beyond Solitary. You can find Mitch as No Dice, No Glory. And uh, Akar, thank you so much for coming on. It has been so wonderful to get to talk to you about your game. Thanks for having me. I love I love your podcast. So it's great to uh, to be on here. <laughs> He's oh, talking to so you, much. Liz, not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's always but, great to talk to you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you so much. Good luck with your game. And uh, happy gaming, everybody. Happy gaming.